Hey, I'm Matt Leitold. Today I'm going to show you how I edit my hotel photos. So I shoot them a little bit differently than some people, but I think this way makes it look a, like it's very natural, welcoming, and all that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my layers. Let me show you what those layers are. So I brought them in there in Photoshop and I've labeled them for you. So let's just go down and start with the base layer. The base layer contains everything I'm going to be start starting to work with. So this is my whole starting point. You'll see I have a light here. Well, that's going to get cloned out with another layer. And then at this whole big bright spot will go away too. So what's great about this one is uh, we have the curtain layer. So we shift that over slightly and then we have this curtain layer so we don't have to worry about cloning that out and trying to make it look right. We just put this one on top and it's done. Our lamps. I drag the shutter a little bit and get our lamps looking a little bit better over here. So I'll bring those and fade those in. Our picture on the left over here got, had some glare on it from our lamps shot. But I also noticed over here it wasn't as bad but you still have some glare there. My polarizing filter didn't quite cut that out. So what I did is I made another layer, moved the light around a little bit, and I'll actually end up brightening this a little bit. But we're just going to take and layer this on top of that picture to make it look like there's no glare. And then lastly, the ceiling shot. This will get put on at the very end and make it look like the ceiling's natural. So let's get started. First, I'm going to option click on the base layer, which will turn on just that layer. Let's hit the current layer. And I'm going to hold down option or alt on PC. Hit the add layer mask button. This is going to make a black mask, which, I'll, which is basically hiding that whole layer. Hit my brush tool, I'm going to switch to a white brush, a little bit soft here, and I'm just going to brush this out. So it's that simple. You'll see it creates a little bit of a shadow here, that's fine. Um, if you want to get really picky, you can come back over here with like a, a little bit less opacity and kind of fade that in. Looks great. We can zoom in here, and you can see there's absolutely no light there at all. So much easier than cloning stuff out. This also works really well for cords if you have those and all that. Next, let's bring in our lamps. So this shot's just a little bit more ambient involved. We can use this to brighten up any dark areas of the photo we have as well. So if we go to the lamps picture here, um, I'm also going to option click on the mask button. It makes a new layer mask with a black one. You could also just hit that and then invert the mask so it's black and doesn't show, but I find that's a little bit easier. Take our brush tool, nice soft white brush. I'm going to bring my opacity to 100%. And then I'm going to hold down Control and Option on Mac to, and then drag up. And I can, it's a quick little way to make your brush softer or harder. And I'm just going to click around here a little bit. I'm going to take a 20% opacity by hitting 2 on my keyboard. And I'm just going to lighten this up a little bit down here. And uh, that looks good. Maybe a little bit more on the refrigerator. Overall, it looks pretty good. All right, that's done. Let's take care of this picture. If we zoom in here, you can see there's, there's some reflection here. Click that. Um, I'm going to make a new selection. So I'm going to hit my lasso tool. And I'm going to make sure this is a polygonal lasso. And you can do this with the pen tool as well, get a little bit more accurate. But these are just going to be viewed on a website. And so it doesn't need to be terribly accurate. It needs to look good, uh, but it doesn't need to look perfect. You're not going to see this right up two feet away from it. So click down here. And we're, what we're doing is we're just making a rectangle around this whole edge. And I clicked one too many times. Command Z will bring that back. Now I'm going to hit the layer mask button. And what that's going to do is it's going to make the rest of the mask black and just show that. Perfect. So now it's just a little bit darker. So you see how it doesn't really quite match the brightness of the wall there. I'll just go to and do adjustments, um, curves, and then I'm going to hold down Option and click between these two layers to create a clipping mask. A clipping mask will just say that, hey, this adjustment layer is only going to affect the layer below it. So it's only going to affect the photo layer. So if I play with this, it'll just make that changes. So I'm just going to grab it kind of here in the mid-tones. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for this to match pretty closely to this wall. 
but not so much over here. So what I might even do is I might go to my, um, my mask here and grab a black brush. I'm just going to hide it. I'm at 20% opacity right now, which would be great. I'm going to switch my color to black by hitting X, and then I'm just going to kind of paint this in a little bit. Fade it out just a little bit more darker. Um, you could also do another, um, another curves on there if you wanted to, but there's really no point. Um, so yeah, that looks nice now. And then the ceiling shot, simple as well. Click on it, hit option, go to the mask button. Um, this is all really about making masks. So brush tool, white brush, 100% opacity. Uh, I like to zoom out a little bit. And my softness, I'm going to make it uh, about there. I kind of just go by look. I'm going to click once. And then I'm going to come down here, I'm going to shift click, and that's going to make a straight line from there to there. And then from there I'm going to shift click over to here, and that's going to make a line, and I'm going to shift click up here. And that's going to keep my lines nice and even. So, looks pretty good. Uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of problem here, this is kind of a harsh transition. So what we can do is uh, we can either lighten up this mask right here, or you can kind of fade it down. I'm going to fade it down just slightly and see how it looks. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm just going to go and, go and fade that in. Make an even bigger brush so I'm just catching the edge of it there. Yeah, something like that. The goal is we want it to really look like that light is coming in there. Um, you see my picture got some more reflection on it because I got into that mask a little bit there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this uh, mask with my Option key. So Option click. Uh, sorry, don't mean, didn't mean to do that. Option click it again. What that did is it just showed me where that mask was. What I need to do is I need to select it, so I'm going to Command click. And then uh, I'm going to go up here to my ceiling mask. Hit my brush tool again, and I'm just going to make this all black in here. That way, um, it won't affect that mask at all. But I still have a nice clean edge. But it will affect the frame since I didn't have the frame selected. Which is perfect. Alright, so the ceiling looks pretty good. There's a little bit of red tones I want to get rid of. So I'm just going to go to the hue and saturation adjustment layer. Option click to create a clicking, clipping mask. I'm going to bring down the saturation until it looks good. About there it looks good. You don't want to completely desaturate it. Oh, it looks too fake. Um, Sometimes if the ceiling's a little bit too dark, you can also do a curves on top of that. Um, same method here. I like to grab this uh, little handy tool here and just very gently click around a little bit here and there. Especially with these popcorn ceilings, you have such, uh, such differences in tones that sometimes it won't look quite right if you just grab it. Um, and with this one, since it just, um, since I had this in the walls a little bit. I don't want to affect the walls. The walls, walls look weird if they're all desaturated like that. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make a nice strong selection here. I'm clicking my, clicking my lasso tool and then just going along this ceiling line. And you can spend a little bit more time on this, but for purposes of this video I'm just going to do it quickly. And I actually need to get up a little bit more here. All right, something like that. Perfect. Grab that. So what that just did is it made a mask, essentially. I mean, it made a selection so we can make a mask. So I'm going to hit Option Backspace, and that was the wrong one. So what I did is I forgot to inverse that. So I'm going to hit Command Z. I'm going to inverse my selection. So Command Shift I. That brought the marching ants, as they call them, around to the outside of the picture. So I've selected the room, not the ceiling. Hit the Option Backspace. We're filling it with uh, with black. Filling all this area down here with black. Uh, you want to make sure your foreground color is set to black when you do an option backspace. All right. Same with the hue saturation layer. And now our color just came back right here. Awesome. So now we have a pretty dang good edited photo. 
Um, if you wanted to get picky, you could go in here and uh, take out some of the stuff like this logo. I'll probably, probably do that. It's a little bit distracting. Um, overall, I just like to get the lighting looking really good. That's what really matters to people when they come in. People want to see a nice bright room. They don't want to see someone that's dark or they don't want to see someone that has fake windows, you know. Um, another thing you can do is you can take a layer. Um, for example, if I wanted to do layer this on top of my base, oh, it's kind of hard to show you right now. Let me go into Lightroom real quick. So these are the shots I started with here. Um, here's our base layer. So if I would have moved this over, see how the window's a little bit brighter right there? If I would have moved this over, I could still just paint this window right on top of there and um, make it look really nice. You can see there's a little bit of reflection from my flashback here. Um, what I could have done is I could have turned off that light in the back that's right by the camera and I wouldn't have these reflections in the window afterthought. Um, you know, it's something that should have paid more attention to, but uh, didn't happen. But it really doesn't look that bad here. Um, if you want to get detailed, you could go in and clone these trees around and make it look pretty dang sexy. Uh, just take care of that, and that takes care of most of it right there. Content-aware field does a pretty dang good job at this. And people are going to notice that the leaves are out of place on a hotel photo. They want to see that, hey, the room looks clean, it looks inviting, and it has the amenities that I need. All right, well, that's all. Um, I hope you learned something from this. Uh, the last thing that I would do is probably just put a gray mask over this TV screen. Um, make a new layer here. Grab your lasso tool. Really quickly, just grab right here. And that's just so it's not as distracting. It makes it a little bit more. It keeps your attention and focus on the room. So um, you can do this a couple different ways. Um, I like to grab a gradient, make a black to white gradient, or black to gray gradient. So look down here, something kind of like that, and then just drag it here. That doesn't make sense because it wouldn't come from that side. Something kind of like that. Make it look real. Um, but as it doesn't even look that real, but what we can do is we can fade that in with the other stuff. So just by dropping the opacity there. There's still a little bit of detail there, so it doesn't look to totally fake, but it makes it look like the screen's off, which is great for what we need for this. All right, that's all. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.